water, perhaps the most important natural resource in the Northwest, providing irrigation, transportation, and energy to this rapidly developing region. Yet long before water was serving man here, it was home to a vast community of plants and animals. The Columbia River system alone is one of the world's greatest fish resources. Among the largest and most important tributaries of the Columbia is the Pondore River. This great river begins in Montana and Idaho, flows north through the northeast corner of Washington, and finally empties into the Columbia in Canada. Its watershed supports a variety of wildlife. But this river has also provided for human needs. The power of the pond array is harnessed all along its path and produces a wealth of electric energy for the Northwest. And the city of Seattle is among the many beneficiaries of this energy. Seattle's Department of Lighting, Seattle City Light, recognized the huge energy potential of the Pondore River and in the late 50s began detailed studies of the Z Canyon area. These canyons, downstream from the town of Medellin Falls, were an ideal area for a hydroelectric project. After a great deal of study, the narrow constriction just below the rushing Z Canyon was chosen for a major project, the Boundary Hydroelectric Project. Finished in 1967, the project created a reservoir 17 miles long, flooding the entire canyon. The uh, river run off to the northeast here, then it made a, a hard turn to the left, and you can see over here, that is the south side of the Z. It come back up, which uh, Pee Wee Creek dumps into it over there, and then it took another uh, right angle turn, or probably a little more than a right angle, and then it headed north again. And that's where they uh, got the definition of Z Canyon, which is uh, no longer uh, able to be seen. Much of the canyon environment and beauty are now gone. Such loss is part of the price paid for hydroelectric power. The decision to build such a project is not made lightly. Rivers are a public resource and in order to build and operate a hydroelectric dam such as Boundary, a license must be granted by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, commonly called FERC. To be granted a license, the proponent must meet numerous conditions to ensure safe and efficient construction and operation. In recent licensing decisions, FERC has examined the environmental impacts of these projects and insisted on mitigation this concern for environmental impact directly affected Seattle when in 1981 City Light applied to raise the generating capacity of Boundary up to its design potential of 1,050 megawatts by installing two additional generators. To meet the requirements of FERC, City Light had to offer a plan to mitigate the environmental impact of the entire Boundary project. In planning the addition of the two generators, City Light was quite aware of the requirements of FERC and built the costs of mitigation into the expansion plans. These included concerns for recreation, water quality, and especially wildlife. We can always stand to have more wildlife. We're certainly short on it, even in this country where there's more of it than most. However, budgeting mitigation does not constitute meeting the obligations imposed by FERC. The question at hand was still what type of project could mitigate the loss of a river canyon and the surrounding wildlife habitats. The Environmental Affairs Division of City Light was given the task of developing a project which would in some way mitigate the impact of the boundary project on wildlife. Of course, City Light could not recreate a river canyon but it saw an opportunity to provide some benefits to the wildlife of the valley. The plan needed the concurrence of state and federal wildlife agencies, had to be responsive to the communities, and had to work in an effective manner. Several proposals were developed and considered, some almost to the point of implementation, but the project planners continued to pursue better alternatives. We looked at a number of mitigation possibilities for the additional units at Boundary Dam. Uh, there were a number of good possibilities that we looked at, but we kept coming back to this East Bank Slough. 
The result was a relatively simple but effective solution which would directly benefit the region's wildlife. City Light proposed to buy a large piece of land adjacent to the project and set this land aside as a preserve for wildlife. This idea met all of the criteria established for the mitigation project. Input for the project was sought from federal and state agencies. City Light did not wish to just purchase a piece of land. The idea was to preserve an environmentally important part of Pend Oreille County, a county rich in natural resources. Pend Oreille County is fortunate to have an abundance of wildlife within its bounds. Elk, waterfowl, osprey, and fish are plentiful. But as history has borne out, a plentiful resource can be rapidly lost if it is treated carelessly. In most cases, hunting is not the problem. Loss of habitat is. Every species has certain requirements for feeding, resting, and breeding. For example, this flicker is nesting in a dead tree or snag. Snags are the natural habitat in which flickers nest. When homes are built, people often clear dead trees from their property. This may be pleasing to homeowners, but it deprives flickers of their ability to nest. Many other species also have particular needs. Osprey need the river for feeding and high trees for nesting. Beavers need the combination of trees and water for building their lodges. For reasons such as these, the Environmental Affairs Division focused its efforts on identifying the types of habitat most threatened in the Pend Oreille area, with the goal of preserving these types of habitat. After consulting agencies and experts, it became apparent that Northeast Washington was rapidly losing wetlands to development. Wetlands are an increasingly scarce commodity. For a variety of reasons, wetlands are being converted to drylands for a variety of uses of man, so that wetlands such as the sea back here are becoming more and more precious. Although Pend Oreille County may seem remote from the growing urban centers, the steady push of development and summer homes is moving north from Spokane. The osprey illustrates this problem. These beautiful birds can often be seen along the Pend Oreille. Yet it was not long ago that they were plentiful on many of the rivers of Washington, including the Duwamish near Seattle. Now, osprey are even a rare sight in much of eastern Washington. The loss of wetlands is a good example of the problems associated with land development. Wetlands are often viewed as an unpleasant swamp, a nuisance at best. But environmentally, wetlands are one of nature's most productive resources. They are the home for hundreds of species of plants and animals, some of which cannot live anywhere else. When these wetlands are destroyed, the birds, fish, plants, the variety of life is eliminated. The threat to wetlands in Pend Oreille County was clear, so the Environmental Affairs Division of City Light began their effort to purchase an appropriate parcel containing wetlands. In addition to the habitat, there were many other factors which shaped the search. It was important that the land be available through voluntary sales, that the land be somewhat isolated from public access, and that it be connected in some tangible way with the boundary project. Several sites were examined. The final selection was a group of properties along the east bank of the reservoir. These 160 acres of undeveloped land had been subdivided into 20-acre parcels and sold for recreational development. The life on this parcel is a marvelous sampling of the variety which exists along the Pend Oreille. Splitting the land into small lots for summer cabin-type development would have had a serious negative effect on many of the native species. This kill deer has been disturbed by the video crew taping it. It is feigning a broken wing to draw the intruders away from its nest. The kill deer is using up precious energy reserves and is being kept from properly tending its eggs. Frequent disturbances, such as those caused by recreational development, would decrease the breeding success of these birds. 
the diversity of habitat is one of the greatest assets of the preserve. The terrain is rich in variety, from the steep slopes of coniferous forests above the river, to flat benches of maple and cottonwood, to the slough and the marshy areas, all providing homes to many species, some rare and beautiful like this lady slipper orchid, and others with rather odd names. The most exciting thing is uh, this little plant that's surrounding me right here. It's uh, called least bladdery milk vetch. It's, this area apparently is one of the few places in Washington where you can, where you can see the plant. We're really lucky that Seattle City Light could acquire this before some other developers came in here and completely changed this. Approval from official agencies was required of City Light in order to gain FERC approval. But City Light was also looking for more than just an official sanction. They were seeking a project that would have the support of the community, those most affected by the project. Because well, I grew up here, and you know, I really love the area. And I remember it back when there wasn't hardly any development at all, and it's it's kind of different now to see what it was from back then, you know. Well, I feel it would be beneficial for all three towns to, mm -hmm. to have something like that between Arkman. Environmental groups also supported the project. Also a very gratifying kind of effort, project, that a, a utilities like Seattle City Light would consider and actually follow through and, and, uh, and bring to fruition. With the support of those in the area, the Wildlife Mitigation Plan was submitted to FERC and subsequently approved. With only the purchase of the land remaining, the Property Management Division of City Light overcame the technical and legal hurdles involved in the purchase process. The beauty present in a place like this property is self-evident, but the importance of preserving habitat may not be as obvious in a place like Ponderay County where there is such abundance. The facts are, though, that wetlands are being lost continuously in this region. These precious places are filled in for development, lost to growing recreational demands, and threatened by the subdivision of larger parcels. The species that call these places home are often lost forever when their habitats are changed or destroyed. The Boundary Wildlife Preserve is City Light's response to these constant encroachments on wildlife habitats. And it is a response which assumes a continuing responsibility on the part of City Light. The project incorporates a long-term management plan to preserve native plants and animals. The land will also be available for limited recreational uses. The yellow, yellow orb are calling now. Okay, how does it go now? How would I know? Well, it goes. Tweet, 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 As well as research and education. However, the primary purpose will remain to provide a secure, lasting home for wildlife. Mm -hmm.